So in today's video, I'm going to be outlining why, if you are a single Western guy, you should consider moving to what I'm going to describe as New Europe. Just behind me here is the Freedom Monument, kind of at the edge of the historic old town of Riga in Latvia in the summer 2023 when I am filming this video. Now the term New Europe, it was coined not by me but by a guy who I really disliked, former US Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. He was one of the architects of the US's invasion of Iraq and in a press conference, he inadvertently coined the phrase New Europe because he was referring to the newer members of NATO that had lived under Soviet occupation, like here in Latvia or in Estonia or in Lithuania, or they have been controlled by the Soviet Union, by communists via the Warsaw Pact. So countries like Poland, Hungary, etc., they're in Central Europe. And he inadvertently called it New Europe because they were basically a lot more aligned with his political point of view and he saw them as the future of Europe. He saw their power, relative power in terms of wealth and military aggrandizing going forward. So that's in contrast to old Europe which is basically the Franco-German engine of the European Union, France and Germany. Now, Dom Russell said this, must be over 20 years ago at this point, and I actually bumped into him once. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Had a rather mundane uh, two-minute conversation with him while we were waiting for a taxi in Washington, D.C. around that time. It was probably in 2005, circa. Anyways, he's no longer also with us. He's passed away in the meantime. But I find his prediction about how the relative power in Europe would develop going forward, so it was 20 years ago, we can now see how the economies here in this part of the European Union have started to catch up with those member states in the west of the European Union and also how in terms of political influence and definitely military influence these countries are growing all the time. But I'm of course talking about why you should move here and it is very important to make this distinction so that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So let's get into the video. Bayekele. Sar experience. So I've alluded to how the economy in Poland is probably going to rival that of the UK in maybe a decade or so. Warsaw is really for me looking like the new capital of this new Europe because it is the central point at the moment. And they are building so much infrastructure around that. You're going to have real Baltica that's going to actually come all the way up from Warsaw through the Suwuki Gap, through Lithuania, through here in Riga, going on to Estonia and Tallinn, and then across the Baltic Sea into the capital of Finland, Helsinki. And that will all hopefully come online in the next decade. There's just massive investment in the civilian infrastructure that's going to improve the quality of life. And Poland is now, well, with the Russo-Ukrainian war, embarking on a project to have the Europe's biggest military, definitely the European Union's biggest military, whether it'll be as big as uh, the Ukrainian military or what's left of the Russian military pretty soon, hard to say, but definitely in the European Union, that is their goal, become a military power on the continent as well. So you're going to have this split, like before <laughs> the Franco-German engine, has dominated European politics, especially since Brexit, since the UK left. And now you're going to see this move to the east in terms of the center of power in Europe. It's definitely going to be split pretty soon. That they're going to be basically equivalent almost, uh, the eastern part of Euro the European Union and the western part. Poland is almost certainly going to be the center of that. Of course, if another big country like Ukraine joins in the future, probably going to be in general allied with them as well. Obviously going to be strong militarily 
and possibly in the future with its agricultural sector in particular a big big economic player as well so that's just the way the direction has been going for 20 years so i'll give donald Rumsfeld that he did spot something that wasn't so evident to so many people 20 years ago but he couldn't have been more uh, smarter about the policies that he was advocating at the time with respect to iraq but yeah he got new europe pretty spot on So these two models, like what like Ukraine is trying to join, while Moldova is trying to join, some other countries on the periphery, probably Belarusians, if they had a free choice, would try to join, is a model that's going to lead to greater economic prosperity, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years. And if you're a guy who's looking to get in, maybe not early if you come here to Riga or to, say, Poland, to Warsaw, but on a, on a, into a country that's on an upward trajectory, then that is the kind of country that you need to be looking for in terms of moving to long term. Definitely the living standards between here and say Germany or France or Italy, UK, they are reducing rapidly. In fact, Poland is estimated to be on track to overtake the UK in terms of GDP per capita sometime in the 2030s, right? So it's probably going to be richer than the UK. A lot of things might change between now and then, but that's the trajectory, right? Now, of course, I'm not saying that for the guys who are the poverty, poor, and sex tourists, basically, uh, who want to just go somewhere where it's cheap, where, you know, the local people, they're probably oppressed, and, you know, the local women are pretty desperate to leave. Um, those guys, obviously, they're interested in going to somewhere that's a complete basket case. No economic prosperity because the reality is that women tend to look for men that can offer them a higher socioeconomic level of life. And, you know, I guess those kind of tourists are going to sell them a bridge about life in the UK or something. And, uh, yeah, so those, th those are the other guys or the other alternative. You're going to see a lot of those guys, obviously, talking here on YouTube about how how great it is in Belarus or Russia or somewhere else uh, at this time with the Russo Ukrainian war. And that's, in my opinion, the main motivation they have, right? But if you're a guy looking to get in somewhere where it's on an upward trajectory, but there's actually some long term prospect uh, for the country, then we've seen over the last 20 years how things have transformed here. And that's personally where I want to get in on. Uh, I don't want to get into a country that's probably going to, you know, over the long term. Uh, go downwards in terms of its economic opportunities and perspectives and quality of life. Uh, that doesn't seem pretty attractive to me on the whole. Might be fine for a trip. And within that context of where I'm putting New Europe, and we can argue a little bit about where the countries are. Exactly, is Serbia really in that? Hard to know at times. Maybe even Hungary. We could question a little bit about its future path. And maybe sometime in the future, Russian imperialism will change and even Russia will, or parts of Russia want to be on that kind of track as well. Aussi les femmes? Ah oui. Ah oui, oui, oui. <laughs> Ça c'est sûr, les femmes polonaises. Allez, tout ce qui est de pays de l'Est, c'est magnifique. C'est rien à voir par rapport à la Belgique. Mais vraiment rien à voir. Et aussi le troisième problème pour moi la Belgique, c'est en fait les impôts. Plus tu travailles moi comme indépendant, plus tu payes d'impôts. And at the end, it's really salé. The big advantage of coming in and coming to this part of New Europe is that you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? You get a certain amount of economic uh, good governance or just political good governance relative to what goes on further east with obviously the economic upside if you start to invest in things like real estate, you set up a base here. Um, you know, it's going to have an upward trajectory over the long term, most likely looking forward. Not going to get your stuff stolen so easily because corruption is less than it is if you go further east. If you look at the perception of corruption indices and you still have big benefits that align in my videos, which are lower cost of living, although that's progressively less, of course, as the economy does well here. Lower taxes in general, yes, there are lower taxes in this part of Europe relative to the countries that are in old Europe for sure. Fatness here, obesity is pretty low compared to what's going to see in a lot of countries like the US and the UK. And that, of course, translates into better dating options, 
women here in general are less obese in everywhere in New Europe relative to when you go to, as I said, the US or the UK or a lot of parts of Latin America even. Uh, you see, because I'm going to include that since I have a lot of viewers from Latin America. And the women are renowned for their beauty. And I've traveled everywhere where there are supposed to be the most beautiful women in the world. Check it out. And this broader region is the place where you will find on average the most beautiful women in the world. So obviously it's just, you know, it's just statistics, supply and demand. If you are setting yourself up here and you're able to demonstrate value, you integrate into local society, learn the local language, for example, it's another big thing, then you're going to do really well with the right plan on the dating market. So that's why I think that for guys that are coming, say, from Western Europe or North America, it is more attractive to be here than further to the east in Europe and further to the west. I think this is the sweet spot right now in 2023. So ignore a lot of the misinformation. You get a lot in the dating sphere, which is now morphed into the political sphere with what are known as red pillars. They tend to describe parts of New Europe as being more or less like having the same values as Russia or something. These people tend to veer towards misogyny, promoting Russian fascism, and homophobia, racism, whatever, right? So a lot of bigotry there. That's not really the case in this part of Europe. And, you know, I'm known as the insider for Eastern Europe because not only have I spent you know, a large part of the last decade here in different countries in the region, I also speak lots of the languages here, like Ukrainian, Russian, even learning some Polish, Romanian, Belarusian. I also have a background in international relations from the world's best grad school on the topic, and I even specialized in this region, and I worked in the EU institutions for a little bit as a lawyer a couple years back. Uh, huh. More than a couple of years back, before I started to spend my time here in Eastern Europe. So I just have a better analytical framework to understand what is really happening geopolitically, both here and in the regions, both to the west, because I worked even in Brussels at the EU institutions, and of course, further to the east in the revanchist Russian Empire that is, as we speak, trying to reestablish its control and influence over this region here in Poland, in Ukraine, obviously, where they've attacked and have killed tens of thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands at this point in a genocidal intended war. I actually had a, a client who's going to join me in Warsaw and on our call, when we're getting to know each other, whether it would be a good fit for him to come and live this our experience with me, he quipped that I am red pill aware without the red pill rage. And I like that description of it. Anyways, I'm going to go and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful evening here in New York. I recently made a video where I outlined the four cities that I've been bringing my clients to in the last year or so, which are Almaty in Kazakhstan, Kishinev, Moldova, here, Riga in Latvia, and Warsaw in Poland. Now, I'm also often asked why I'm not recommending other cities, I'm not saying that there's no point going to any other city in this region, but I have picked out these four as my favorites, and I think that the offer especially the single Western guy looking to live for three to 12 months per year in this part of Europe, in New Europe, then those are the best. So you have these countries, not just the ones like here in Latvia and obviously Poland that have already joined the European Union, but countries that are striving to get out of Russia's orbit. And the main catalyst for that, I made a video just before the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine it was in Kharkiv on on the eastern side of Ukraine, outlined that the main reason why Ukrainians were trying to get out of Russia's orbit was economic. The political model of Russia, which is basically imperial, and obviously they have a authoritarian regime in charge that has not been giving its citizens or the countries that follow it 
the same economic success as the countries that have taken a different path. So let's take here in the Baltics and Poland, their GDP per capita is more than double the GDP, cap, GDP per capita of Russia. In fact, it's higher GDP per capita here than it is in Moscow, right? That just shows how the two different trajectories have led to, right, in terms of economic success. So as a walk back towards the old town here in Riga, I'm reminded that this is a spot where most visitors are going to come to and probably have the tourist experience, which is, well, there aren't so many locals who hang out in this part. It's very touristic, obviously it's very beautiful, has a lot of dodgy bars with very friendly girls standing outside who are more than willing to relieve you of your cash and it is not the place to go to if you want to have the real local high level experience whatsoever you will not find in general the local hotties down there and you know if you're just looking for the tourist experience hanging out eating at some steakhouse with a meter tall beer with other you know tourists or maybe some local expats who haven't integrated so badly integrated immigrants then you know that's the spot for you the old town you can knock yourself out there but in general i help my clients with a very different type of experience and we go and live the in-person experience the first step for you living a life of more abundance lower taxes in general obviously better quality of living better dating options and just more freedom in general i would say and that is the in-person our experience and it is not for everybody. It is by application only. There's an application form down below. And, you know, if you want to contrast it, like, of course, you can come here and ramble around the old town by yourself. But, <laughs> you know, with my clients, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be not going to some general admission, uh, cheap bar, you know, kind of a throwback to uh, Riga's more um, sleazy days of like cheaper kind of sex tourism and stuff like that. We're gonna be over at the Premier Club where the higher level and more beautiful local girls go and we're gonna have our table there and we're gonna basically party like rock stars. Does that sound appealing to you? Then down below is the application form. Now, before you do that, you should check out some of my other playlists. You're gonna have the cities that I go to on this our experience. If you haven't seen those already, you've got some nice vlogs there. Give you a little bit more of the flavor of the experience as well. And then you have my tutorials series for dating the uber beautiful here in Eastern Europe. It's like probably over 30 videos there already. Just link those up on cards down below in the description and go check those out before you think of applying. And you know, it's August, 2023 when I'm shooting this video. So I've been bringing my clients as I said to Chisinau in Moldova, Mad Moldova had an amazing time there, in particular in summer 2022. And also a little bit this summer, having more up here in Riga in Latvia with clients also in Warsaw, Poland, which is basically now the new capital city of this new Europe. Absolutely, really phenomenal social life there. Now it's a very exciting time to go there. You're gonna have obviously the pretty poles as well. If you're looking for the dating options as your main priority, the cute Ukrainians and the beautiful Belarusians. And here, obviously you have the super tall leggy blondes of Riga. And then finally have Almaty, the Almighty in Kazakhstan, where I started at the beginning of my summer and I plan to end it very shortly, just off the steps of Central Asia. Phenomenally beautiful place in terms of its nature, its lakes, its mountains, its canyons, and also super friendly. Majority Asian girls, as you'd expect, in Central Asia. The very, very east of Europe. So down below is your opportunity to take your shot and it could be you on your first step in your lifestyle, enhanced lifestyle, your 5x lifestyle here in new Europe. Ciao ciao. This Vidania from Riga in Latvia. Sar experience.